Control your vagus nerve to improve gut health and anxiety. If you have hiatal hernia, acid reflux, if you also suffer with heart palpitations, shortness of breath, anxiety, this is the video for you. The vagus nerve is an incredible cranial nerve. It traverses most of your body, going to most of your organs, and especially your heart, your lung, diaphragm, all of your abdominal organs, and of course your entire gut. So it is very impactful to the kinds of symptoms we just mentioned. And I'm gonna teach you some tools today, some things you can do on your own to really impact your heart rate, your level of calm, as well as talking about some foods you have to ensure are in your diet so that you can allow the very special gut-brain connection to work. So let's dive into it. The vagus nerve is 85% sensory. It just, it's sensing what's happening within your organs. And the sensation is, is chemical and mechanical, meaning that you can overfull you know, your stomach, overfill your stomach with too large a meal, think Thanksgiving, and you'll feel that stretch of, of your stomach, that overfull, of like, oh, why did I eat so much? That's your vagus sensing that mechanical stretch or overfullness. And then it can also sense uh, too much acid, too little acid in your stomach, etc. So it's an incredible sensory uh, nerve. And then what we want to do is make sure that it's functioning, you know, as as well as we possibly can make it. And there are some simple things, as I mentioned. So one tool so if you feel like your heart races um, you get anxious because of that and you're just not calm you're tense and you have heart racing and you can have one without the other there is a tool called it's called a physiological sigh and it's all about the fact that when you exhale your heart rate slows down when you inhale your heart rate speeds up not to a bad degree but if your heart is racing you know if that's troubling you then you want to focus on something that's going to relax you and at the same time your vagus tends to be more dominant in what's called the parasympathetic nervous system so that's the rest digest, relax. So if you think of the symptoms of hiatal hernia, acid reflux, all these digestive symptoms, in addition to shortness of breath, heart palpitations, anxiety, it, it's all meaning you're not getting enough parasympathetic, right? You're not getting enough rest, digest, relax. You're too much in the sympathetic mode. And the vagus does some sympathetic activities as well, but what we're trying to do is, is shift to the parasympathetic. And so the physiological sigh is the tool, and there's, there's two ways to do it. And uh, if you're feeling you know, that stress level, what you wanna do is you wanna take a, a, a breath in, and then you wanna exhale for as long as you can. So your inhale, let's see if we do a count of, uh, let's just make it super simple and do it. Inhale for a count of two, one, two, and then exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, I exhaled for eight. So you want to do a normal inhale and then really focus on the slow exhale. And you do that as many times as it takes for your for you to settle and you'll feel it. You'll feel that relax. Um, box breathing is another technique, but the physiological sigh is, is quite easy to do. And then there's another exhalation technique where you, you take a deep inhale and then a quick inhale just to really fill your lungs and then blow out and and extenuate the exhalation until there's literally no more air in your lungs. So you have to bring in air, bring air back in. So it's a much longer exhale than inhale. And I'll show you what the inhale looks like. So it's, okay, you see, see that extra? And then I'm not gonna do it that long because I don't wanna bore, bore those who are just listening and, and not watching, but you really exhale until you get all the air out of your lungs. And this is actually an exercise that you can do 10, 20 times a day to kind of 
uh, groove in that pathway, that neurological pathway. It's like it's an exercise. So you exercise to tone muscles. This is exercising to tone your vagus nerve. And what could be simpler than breathing? You're breathing in a slightly different way, but it's making a huge difference in that level of calm. It'll also tend to increase your heart rate variability, which is a very good thing. As we get older, the heart rate variability goes down and uh, that affects us from a, you know, an overall longevity standpoint to be all encompassing, but a number of other things as well. You can look those up. But uh, so this, this is tool number one is the physiological sigh. And then just that, um, that two-step inhalation and then the long exhalation, which you can do anywhere, anytime. And, and you know, nobody knows what you're doing but you, but it can make a huge difference in how you feel. So try that and try it for a little while and, and let me know how you feel because it really is very impactful. And this is based on research, um, you know, neurology research with the vagus nerve. So uh, it's, it's such a powerful nerve, yet it can be impacted in some, you know, quite simple ways, which is exciting. Now, the other thing I want to talk to you about is, is the gut-brain connection. Now, um, we, we hear about the gut-brain connection. Maybe you've heard that 80% of serotonin, the brain chemical that's all about calm and you know, lowering anxiety, decreasing depression, that that is 80%, I'm sorry, 90% produced in the gut. And that is true. It is produced in the gut. But we kind of always thought that it somehow, the, the serotonin produced in the gut somehow meandered to the brain um, because, you know, it's a brain chemical. <laughs> so, you know, it has benefits in your gut in that it improves gut motility, which is really important if you have hiatal hernia and, and overall gut symptoms because it's the lack of motility. Food just sits there. You're constipated. So motility is very important. It improves your immune system, which uh, is, is critical. Obviously, we want a strong immune system, and most of our uh, immune system is housed in our gut, so there's that interaction. So serotonin is very important for gut health, immune health. Great. And then we also know that it's a brain uh, chemical. So how does it get there? We just assumed, well, 90% is produced in your gut, so it's got to somehow travel to your brain. Turns out it doesn't cross that barrier. It's called the blood-brain barrier. Uh, so it can't get through. So it's like, hmm, that's interesting. So here's how it works. And this was the surprising connection that I, that I teased a moment ago. So you produce serotonin for two reasons. One, you have to have enough tryptophan. So that's an amino acid in your diet. I'll go over which foods have that. So you need enough tryptophan, but you also need a healthy gut. So you need a good, diverse, what's called microbiome. So the microbiome are the 60 to 100 trillion organisms in your colon, and you want healthy ones, but you also want diversification. You want a nice variety of them to ensure optimal gut health. So if you have a nice, diverse microbiome, you're eating enough tryptophan, the amino acid, then you're producing that nice level of serotonin. When you have a good amount of serotonin produced, what happens is the vagus nerve senses that. Remember, it's 85% sensory. It's sensing all these things. And so it senses, oh good, the brain made me enough serotonin. And it sends a message up to your brain. And then in your brain, is the release of serotonin. But there has to be enough serotonin in the gut produced, then the message can occur gut to brain, and then the brain releases serotonin and you have calm, you don't have anxiety, and you don't have depression. It's cool, right? So we had it, we had it right but wrong, right? Um, so now we understand how that happens. So um, tryptophan, that amino acid, it's pretty easy to get. You hear about turkey being high in tryptophan. It is, so is chicken, so are dairy products, so is fish, so are a lot of nuts and seeds. And you know, there's a lot of things that, that contain tryptophan. You can look those up online, but it's it's really it's not the, not so much a deficiency of tryptophan. And I'm, I say that, and then in the next breath, I think, well, somebody can have a really ultra processed diet and, and, you know, maybe be falling a little short. So look at the foods that it's in, make sure those are in your diet. So that should be pretty easy because it's so diverse. And then you want to look at 
Um, and this is, this is where it's a little bit harder, that diversity of the microbiome. So one easy thing you can do is eat one to four servings of fermented foods. And the research based on this, I will put in the description. So one to four non-sugared fermented foods. So if you're having a yogurt, there's no sugar in it. It's a plain yogurt. You can add your, your own fruit. Uh, if you get a kombucha, make sure there's no alcohol in it because some, they all have a little bit, but some have a lot and, and we don't need that. So the kombucha, also kimchi, so a lot of different fermented foods, again, non-sugar, and that will increase that diversity of your microbiome. Okay, so those were, let's see, that was the, the tool, the foods, and the connection. Good, so we covered all that. What I want to add to that is that um, you can be doing the right things through your vagus nerve, but need a little bit more help, especially in that microbiome arena. So I gave you the thing to do at home, but if you need more help, we're happy to help you in that regard. Uh, so I hope you found this interesting. The vagus nerve is truly fascinating and everything we can do to enhance its function will absolutely help your mood, your gut health, the connection between the two. And um, I hope you found it as interesting as I did. And um, send me a comment. I really want to hear how you do with these exercises. They are so easy to do, but you know, bring them into your life. Let me know how you feel. Uh, send me a comment and um, consider subscribing to the channel so more people can, be, uh, can avail themselves of this information. And we'll talk soon.